things on, please. Um, let us just pray to God. It's time for prayers. This is the beginning prayers. So let us commit, let us just thank God for everything the Lord has done for us and what he has continued to do and what he will continue to do. Father, Lord, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for what you have started in our lives. It's another year in Women's Conference. Father, Lord, we give you all the glory. We magnify your name, O oh Lord, my God, because you have allowed us to gather together today. Father, Lord, my God, we thank you, O oh Lord, my God, for the gift of life over every all BICC women, especially at this time. Father, Lord, we magnify your name. We give you all the glory, O oh Lord. You are ever faithful. Because you said in your, in, in your book, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, you said that we should give thanks in all circumstances. For this is, the, this is your will for us in Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, we bless your name, O oh Lord, my God. We thank you for the spirit and the power that fills the church of God. Father, Lord, we give you all the glory. Father, Lord, we magnify your name. We give you all the adoration, O oh Lord, my God. Father, Lord, we magnify your name. We give you all the adoration, O oh Lord, my God. Father, we bless your name for, for your divine protection, for your faithfulness over the women of BICC. It is all you, O oh Lord. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. But let us just commit, let us commit ourselves into God's hand. Let us ask for forgiveness of sins in everything we might have done, whether sins knowingly or unknowingly. Whatever we might have done, let us ask God for, for forgiveness of sin. Father, Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands, O oh Lord. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. We repent of every sins of omission or commission. Whatever we might have done, O oh Lord, my God, that will not allow you to minister to us today. That will not allow all the praises, all the prayers. All the things that will be done today to be accepted. Father, we ask that you will forgive us. Father, we ask that the blood of Jesus will cleanse everyone that will be part of this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, my God, we ask that your blood, oh Lord, my God, will cleanse us from every blemish or unrighteousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we deep our, we deep everyone that will be partakers of these blessings today into the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, my God, we pray that you will take control. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us now ask for the Lord to take absolute control of what we're going to do today. Today is the first day of the BICC Women Conference. Let us ask God to take absolute control of everything that will be done today. Father, Lord, my God, we commit this conference into your hands from this very minute, oh Lord, to when we finish, we ask, oh Lord, my God, that you take control. We have gathered together because it is your perfect will for us to gather. Father, we ask, oh Lord, my God, that you will take absolute control of this conference, oh Lord. Father, Lord, we ask, oh Lord, my God, everyone that you will be used today, that, that will be used today until the very end of this conference, Father, Lord, my God, will be used not by flesh, oh Lord, but by you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that will be doing one thing or the other, Father, we dip down in the blood of Jesus. Father, we ask that they will not be used by flesh. You alone will speak through them to us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Father, Lord, let us just give all the glory to God. Let us just, just continue to praise the Lord. He is our Jehovah Jireh, is our Jehovah Nissim, is the I am that I am. Father, Lord, we lift up your name, oh Lord, my God. There's none like you. There's none like you. We bless your name, oh Lord, my God. Father, Lord, my God, we give you all the glory, oh Lord, for us to be able to be part of this conference. For you, oh Lord, my God, to set the day and the and allow the day to come to pass. And you even, oh Lord, my God, you allow us to be partakers in this glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. There's none like you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the Women's Conference of Best Way International Christian Center. We thank the Lord for letting us to see another day. 
because of God's love, we are not consumed. We want to take this opportunity to thank our general overseer and our pastors for giving us this opportunity to host this conference. We also thank our men and children for their support. The BICC Women Ministry share the same mission statement as BICC worldwide, empowering people from every walk of life to become the best in all that God has called them to be, working in faith and advancing into their God-given destiny. This year's conference is all about you and your God. The topic is moving to higher ground. The conference is for three days. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. and on Sunday at each branch. Join us as we move into higher ground. Step up by faith and trust God for what he say he will do. He will do. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. It's time for our hymn. And the first hymn for the conference today is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. So remain muted, but you can join me as we sing the hymn. Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet your tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, evermore his praise is sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to His people in distress. Praise Him still the same as ever, slow to turn. And sweet to bless. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glorious in his faithfulness. Father, like he takes us, well, I feel free. In his he gently bears us, rescues us from all our folks. Hallelujah, hallelujah, widely yet his mercy flows. Angels help us to adore him. You behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him. Dwell us all in time and space. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise with us the 
God of grace. Hallelujah. Hello, hello everybody. Thank you for coming. I want to praise God for this wonderful evening. We're going to do the reading this evening. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we're reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, from verses 1 to 23. Exodus 33, uh, from 1 to 23. Can everybody hear me? Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Uh, so we start with one. The Lord said to Moses, leave this place, you and the people you brought out of Egypt, and go to the land that I promised to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants. I will send an angel to guide you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. You are going to a rich and fertile land, but I'll not go with you myself because you are a stubborn people and I may destroy you on the way. When the people heard this, they began to mourn and did not wear jewelry anymore. For the Lord had commanded Moses to say to them, you are a stubborn people. If I were to go with you, even for a moment, I would completely destroy you. Now take off your jewelry and I'll decide what to do with you. We are on verse six now. So after they left Mount Sinai, the people of Israel no longer wore jewelry. Whenever the people of Israel set up camp, Moses would take the sacred tent and put it up some distance away from the camp. It was called the tent of the Lord's presence. And anyone who wanted to consult, with, who wanted to consult the Lord would go out to eat. Whenever Moses went out there and the people would stand at the door of their tents and watch Moses until he entered it. Verse nine, after Moses had gone in, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the door of the tent and the Lord would speak to Moses from the cloud. As soon as the people saw the pillar of cloud at the door of the tent, they would bow down. The Lord would speak with Moses face to face, just as someone speaks with a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But the young man who was his helper, Joshua, the son of Nun, stayed in the tent. Verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, it is true that you have told me to lead these people to the land, but you did not, but you did not tell me whom you would send me with. You have said that you know me well and are pleased with me. Now, if you are, Tell me your plan so that I may serve you and continue to please you. Remember also you have chosen this nation to be your own. 14. The Lord said, I will go with you and I'll give you victory. Moses replied, if you do not go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you are pleased with your people and with me if you do not go with us? Your presence with us will distinguish us from any other people now. 17. The Lord said to Moses, I will do just as you have asked, because I know you very well and I'm pleased with you. Then Moses requested, please let me see the dazzling light of your presence. The Lord answered, I'll make all my splendor pass before you in your presence. I'll pronounce my sacred name. I am the Lord and I'll show compassion and pity to those I choose. 20. I will not let you see my face because no one can see me and stay alive. But here is a place besides me where you can stand on a rock. When the dazzling light of my presence passes by, I will put you in an opening in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take the hand away and you will see my back, not my face. Amen. Hello everyone.
everyone. I am Mrs. Bola Afuape. Today we'll be having a discussion on God's faithfulness to us, spiritually, physically, and financially among the body of Christ in Best Way International Christian Center, BICC. Looking back from where God has brought us, where we are presently, and where he's taking us to, of a truth, the Lord has been good and gracious. And that is why the title of our convention this year is Moving Onto Higher Ground. We acknowledge the faithfulness of God in BICC. That is why in the panel with me today, I have three beautiful women to ruminate about the goodness of God. On my left is... Mrs. On my right is... Mrs. Oluwakemi Omole. And on my far right is Mrs. Adiola Adesoya. Thank you and welcome. Mrs. Tope Alabi, you have been in BICC for quite some years now. Could you tell us what stands out in terms of what God has done in our midst? Good day, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, we thank the Lord for his faithfulness and his mercy. Um, looking back to where we were and how far the Lord has brought us, we can indeed say that God has been good to the house of the ICC. The plan of the enemy was to sift us like wheat, but thanks be to God, who always caused us to be conqueror and overcomers. And by his grace today, we are still standing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, spiritually, the women of BICC have not neglected the assembly of the righteous. We encourage each other in the study of the word of God. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. So through our communion together, we are able to sharpen each other spiritually and in the things of God. Um, we have grown into spiritual maturity since we first gave our lives mm -hmm. to Christ. Very true. And this is evidenced by the manifestation of the fruits of the Spirit according to the book of Galatians chapter 5, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. At VICC, the women of BICC will pray, will pray mm -hmm. daily with that of fail. Every five o'clock in the morning, we are on our knees, praying for the body of Christ, praying for God's guidance and direction, and also for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We have smaller cell groups through our Zuno groups, and this allows us to connect better and everything becoming more like Christ. And for me, more importantly, above all things, many of our women are able to relate to God on a more personal, personal level. Um, serving, growing in the body of Christ, and daily becoming what God has called us to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your touching reflections, Mrs. Salabi. Mrs. Kemi Omole, Looking at recent years, can you share how you have seen the hand of God in BICC? Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, God has been ever faithful to us for many years. A lot has been happening. It has not been all smooth sailing, to be honest. So many trouble on every side. Yet, we are not destroyed, nor crushed. We did not allow any anxiety, sorrow, disappointment to overwhelm us, with God on our side. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and Matthew 5, 4. Despite the difficult situation, God saw us through is faithfully carry us and comforted us. Over the year, many have been hospitalized, but none of them died. Thank you. With the help of God, 
and the power of prayers. They are back on their feet. Amen. 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 Many of us went through bereavement, mourned the death of our loved ones, loss of jobs, which has brought discouragement. But is faithfulness ever sure? Because it is not man's ability, but it's God that has been sustaining and upholding us. Even our age people in the church, their brain did not fail them, neither having any sickness. They are ever strong and healthy. Also, God spare our lives, our children, and our husband, of course. God provided for us in the book of Philippians 4.19. God strengthens us in times of weakness. 1 Corinthians 12 9. We see increase on every side. For all this, we give thanks to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These testimonies have been life changing. Indeed, we can confidently say, according to the verse 29, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say there is a lifting up. You have been in BSC before you got married, and now you have grown up kids. Looking back, what would you say are the notable things that demonstrated the goodness and faithfulness of God in BSC? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. According to Psalm 1616, 16, in the eyes, indeed, the light has been made unto us in that as the body of Christ, we walk in accordance to Psalm 2717 and Hebrews 1020, whereby we lead one another. We do not neglect the needs of each other. In terms of our finances, we carry ourselves along and we encourage one another. I remember a time when, you know, within the church, we our professions were menial jobs. We worked menial jobs such as cleaning. And, you know, gone are the days when our prayer request was to have council housing. We're at a point where both old and young, age is not the limit. We've gone back into education. We've gone and attained professional qualifications. We now have... You know, we work in good places and we're progressing. We continue okay. to progress. We don't look at the fact that we, our older ones are going back into communication. And when we're at the point where we, we're not only acquiring properties to live in, we're actually working towards building property portfolio. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that as an individual. And it doesn't end among It extends to our children as well. Our young adults are having, you know, they, they work in respectable places, they have high jobs, they go into entrepreneurship, we have people that have businesses, we have people that have businesses, in the church to you know, have their own businesses, our children in terms of their education as well, they are flourishing. And for all this, indeed, we are very grateful for the grace of God. Hallelujah. Mr. So I can't, I can remember in those days of humble beginnings so i can tell where you're coming from when we had to hire a cab to take the musical instruments to the church and after the service we do the same but now we're comfortable in our own building glory be to god hallelujah moving forward would you like to give a word of advice to people out there what i'd like to say is in bicc we work according to matthew 6 27 where we are ensuring that we are building financial stabilities for ourselves and for our families. We encourage one another. When we see opportunities out there, we, we, we make ourselves aware. The church often have um, financial seminars. The church often hold um, you know, employment seminars for us where we have people come and talk to us and all we people within ourselves. We have seminars, we have conferences where we just enlighten ourselves into you know, the opportunities that are in the world right now. 
and you know, and we are benefiting from those sort of enlightenment. And I can confidently say that since I've been a member of BICC, in fact, the sky is just beginning for us in terms of where how we are growing in our financial status. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the word of advice. Mrs. Topelabi, what advice would you give to people out there? Um, so as many that are out there watching uh, this conference and joining us, um, I would like to leave you with these words from Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. Reading from the King James Version, it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. In order to grow spiritually and serve the Lord, to be planted in the right environment where you're being fed with the right word of God, where the word of God is rich and the anointing is flowing from the top to every single member. And here in BSCC, our spirits are being fed and not sure and we're daily growing. So come join us and you'll be blessed. Thank you. Come join us. Mrs. Kemi Omole, what would you advise people that are listening to our discussion today? Well, my advice, when something bad happens, don't think of the bad side, but think of the good that can come out of it, regardless of anything. Always be grateful to God in all things. Because you are more than conquerors through Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8 37 and 1 Peter 5 7 says, We should cast all our cares on Him. So, I'm using this opportunity to invite you all to come and see that our God is good. Taste. And our God is sweet, like honey. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. You have heard it all from these mighty women of valor, the great and mighty things that God is doing in BICC. We are inviting you today to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. It is not that we are too holy or know how to pray so well. It is because of God's mercy that we are enjoying these great benefits from God. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. May you receive the blessings of those who sit in the secret place of the, of the Most High, according to Psalm 91 verse 1. And may the faithfulness of God never depart from your household. Thank you for listening. Our hymn, our second hymn this evening is Higher Ground and Pressing on the Upward Way. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where those are bound, 
my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world. Though Satan's that at me are held, for faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God. The Lord will definitely plant our feet on the higher ground in the name of Jesus. The way we began this year is not the way we are going to end this year. Coronavirus or no coronavirus, our God will plant us on the higher ground in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to first of all thank God for the privilege to be chosen to speak to you all today. I thank God for our general overseer who continually to give with women that this great opportunity to hold this conference. Thank God that he believes in us. That's why he's giving us this privilege every year. I also want to thank God for our women leaders, BICC women leaders worldwide, who has given me this opportunity to be able to uh, share uh, this topic with you. Um, moving on onto higher ground. I am really humble. I thank you, I appreciate you so much. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, almighty God, King of glory, I thank you that this is the moment your children are waiting for, to hear your word that you have for them, oh God. I pray, Adonai God, that you will take my place. I step back, I step back that you will take my place. I pray, Father God, that you use my man like a radio, radio writer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray that you would defocus the eyes of your children from me, O God. Let them see you and not see me, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let them hear your voice and not my voice, O Lord, in Jesus' name. That as I speak your word, they will hear your, they will hear your voice through your word in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of the living God, take absolute control. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I thank God for the social protection. He has actually a lot. And so I'm going to jump so many areas because they've covered most of what I want to uh, talk about. Right. The topic says moving on onto a higher ground. Moving on onto a higher ground. And it's taken from the book of Exodus, three. From verse 13 to 14. I will read. 
He said, now therefore, I pray thee, if I had found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. I want you to mark in your Bible. He says, I, I show me thy way. Just underline it on your Bible. And that I may know thee. Underline that word, that I may know thee. Hallelujah. That I may know thee and that I may find grace in thy sight. Underline that same word. That I may find grace in thy sight. And the last one. And consider that this nation is thy people. Underline that word. Because we're gonna, I'm going to address those words in the area of moving onto a higher ground. Verse 14. Moses asked this, prayed this prayer. But God not answered him. You believe me that God always answered prayer, as we had in the discussion uh, um, forum. He says, God answered him in verse 14. He said, and he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. No one that call upon God that God does not answer. But let me first of all look at Moses before we actually go dive deep into it. Moses is a very humble man. And for you to oppress on, you must be a very humble person before God. You can't come with an arrogance. God will not listen to you. Like uh, the, the Bible passage we read. He said the people of Israel, they are stiff naked, very stubborn. But Moses is not that kind of person. Moses is a, is a man of integrity. Moses is a man who fear God. If you want to move on to a higher ground, the fear of God must fill your heart. Moses is a man who is after God's own heart. If you want to press on to a higher ground, you must be possessed, you must be hungry. Like you had in that discussion, our women will wake up 365 days a year. Every day, whether summer, whether winter, we wake up 5 a.m. That's to tell you that women of BICC, we are pressing on to a higher ground on a daily basis, seeking God. Hallelujah. Now, Moses is faced with challenges. Just we are facing challenges today. Pandemic, coronavirus. It's not only in London, it's global, worldwide. There is no one country that is not affected. So the same thing Moses, in his own time, there is a big challenge. What was the challenge? The challenge is the people he's taking to the promised land. And he does not know how to take care of them. And that was why he prayed that prayer. He said, I pray thee that I may find grace. Moses realized that he cannot do it. So for you to be able to press onto a higher ground, you should have to know that you cannot do it by yourself. Without God, you are nothing. He says, Moses asked God for a way. Moses was not depending on miracles. He's asking God to show him the way. So in this coronavirus, what do you do? You ask God. In this financial crisis, what do you do? You ask God. You don't use, yes, like one of our mommy always said, he said, come on, he said, it's not common. He said, it's not common, and which is a fact. So you need to ask God to show you the way. What do you do? How do you do it? And that's why we have the Holy Spirit, to guide us. In the time of Moses, the Holy Spirit was not meant for all. They had the angel. But we have the angel, and we still have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! We are blessed. We are blessed generation. We have the angels that are always guiding us. They are invisible. When we are sleeping, the angels surround us. When our eyes cannot reach our children, the angels are there to watch over our children. And we have the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Moses is someone who is concerned about the work of God. So for you to press on, don't be self-centered. Care about others. As we care about others, God will care about you. But when you are self-centered, you can't press on. Praise the Lord. But for us to be able to look deeper, you might say, oh, the time of Moses, uh, Moses do hear God audibly. Now we don't hear God audibly. But let's go to the book of Philippians. Philippians will tell you that, yes, it's our own dispensation. It's in the New Testament. It's not Old Testament. Philippians 3, 10 to 14. Verse 10, he said, 
This is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is someone. He's a learned person. He's a man who has persecuted. You may say, oh, I am a sinner. I can't press. It's a lie. Apostle Paul was a worse murderer, killing the saints. But yet, look at what he said. He said, that I may know him. What Moses asked in verse 13, Exodus 33. He said, that I may know him. That should be your goal. A woman, a man who wants to press on, you must desire to know God. Not the miracles. Desire to know God. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. The power of his resurrection. The time of Moses, there was no power of resurrection. You only know God and that's it. But we have what? The power of resurrection. Hallelujah. Woo! And that is where we stand. Because Jesus Christ resurrected. Our faith is secured. Hallelujah. He said, that's the best. He said, and the fellowship of his suffering. So Christianity is not bed of roses. A man who wants to press on should be ready to suffer because of her faith. Should be ready to suffer because of Jesus. Should be ready to live an uncomfortable life because of Jesus. You cannot live a comfortable life and say you are pleasing God. No. He says, and have an he said, there I may uh, know the fellowship of his suffering. This is Apostle Paul here. And confirm, I want you to underline that word, that I may know him in verse 10. The power of his resurrection, underline it in your Bible. And the fellowship of his suffering, underline that word in your Bible. And being conformed to his death. Hallelujah. Being conformed to his death. So which means Apostle Paul was ready to die. And that's what the book of Revelation 12 says. He said they love not their life unto death. Yes, we always quote that uh, 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 passage, the, the, the air part of it. Um, we, we overcome by the blood of the Lord, by the blood of, word of our testimony. Yes, I agree with you. But at the same time, are you ready to love your life unto death? Early this year, when I was going through challenges, the Holy Spirit dropped that thing in my heart. He said, are you ready to love your life unto death? Even when everything is gone. I said, God, I need your grace. And that is the grace Moses was asking for. In Exodus 13, uh, 33, verse 13. He said, your grace is what we all need every day. He asked him for the grace of God. Verse 12. He said, not as, as though I have already attained. Apostle Paul does not look at what he has attained. Oh, I've uh, won so many souls. No. Oh, that I, I'm a, an apostle of the apostles. No. Uh, apostle Paul wrote three quarter of New Testament. He did not settle for that. He was still crying that I may know him. That I may know him. He was still hungry for more. A man, a woman who wants to press on, never settle for where you are. Press on. Keep hungry for God. Keep pressing on for God. He says, I, he said, not as though, verse 12, not as though I had already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on. This is Apostle Paul who had a one-to-one -one encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ, and yet he's not satisfied. What more? If I see, maybe if I see Jesus Christ today, I will say no more. But Apostle Paul is teaching us here. Don't be content with the revelation you had yesterday. Press on. Move on to a higher height. Praise the Lord. Verse 13. He says, I do not count myself to have apprehended. Apostle Paul did not look at his past achievement. Have you bought houses and you think, oh, you've got two, three houses, oh, you want to settle down? No. You can do better. Hallelujah. Have you got cars? No. Don't settle for it. You can do better. Have you, uh, have you got the material things of this world? No. Don't settle for it. They are good. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But the truth is, the moment you breathe your last breath, those things perish here. But let me move on to the next one. Moses had a goal. What is your goal? Are your goals internal goal or uh, uh, um, earthly goals. Moses had two, just two goals. 
the promised land to take the people of Israel to the promised land. And his main goal is to please God. If you read the book of Exodus very well, Moses never moved when God don't tell him not to move. He only make a move when God tells him. And he always see God. And that's why God also loved David. David never go, for, go to war without asking God, God, can I go? God will say, yes, go. And that is a woman, a man who wants to press on, who wants to move on to a higher ground. Be a woman that always asks God, what next? What next? What do I do? What do I do? Praise the Lord. Those who seek for earthly gold, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 4, he says those things are temporal. But when you seek for spiritual goals, they are internal. Go and read the book of um, Galatians 5, 20, uh, 22 to 25. Those are the things that will help you to press on. Those are the things that will help you to press on. And Jesus Christ also said in the book of Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What happened? All these things will be added unto you. When you seek God first in everything, no matter how big the mountain is, when you seek God in the midst of crisis, God will show up. You heard it in our discussion, just come uh, past. When you seek God in the midst of crisis, God will show up and he will show himself strong. Praise the Lord. But let me tell you, is there anyone under my voice here? Yes, you might say, ah, Pastor Ruth, you don't understand what I'm going through. There is no problem that comes before any child of God that comes to stay. Every problem is temporary. It must go. It has an expiring date. Hallelujah. Every problem has an expiring. Coronavirus has its expiring date. God knows the end of the coronavirus from the beginning. So he has an expiring day. You and me don't know, but when the time comes, coronavirus have no choice but to live. Praise the Lord. So there is no mountain that confronts you as a child of God that will not live. But let me say, if you don't have Jesus, and you're under my voice here, your mountain cannot listen to a name because the scripture says, God has given us a name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee bow. So if you don't have Jesus, at the end of this message, I want, you, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer to all problems. There is no mountain that is too high for you to climb. There is no hill that you cannot go through. Because why? You have Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, are you facing rejection? Are you being oppressed at work? Are you discouraged in the ministry? For that reason, you are slowing down. You don't want to press on. My sister, my brother, my pastors, my everybody, brethren. The book of 1 Corinthians 15, 18 says, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abound in the work of God. Don't let on anything stop you from pressing on. I don't believe the sky is the limit for the child of God. Heaven is the limit for the child of God. Hallelujah. Heaven is the limit, not the sky. The sky is for the world. Heaven is our limit. Praise the Lord. Are you seeking protection? The book of Psalm 91 is loaded with the promise of protection. Confess it every day and see what God will do. Praise the Lord. Are you seeking help? The book of Isaiah 41, 31, he said, those that trust in the Lord, the, the Lord will help them. They will, they will find strength. The Lord will renew their strength. And they will rise up with wings like eagle. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not go weak. A man who is pressing on has to trust God. Praise the Lord must trust God. Are you troubled because your equals have already achieved and you have not achieved? My sister, my brother, the book of Psalm 37, one says, fret not. Fret not, my sister. Fret not, my brother. Because why? The Lord is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask or think. 
He's a, he's a perfect timing God. He is never too late. He's never late at me. Our God is never late. He's always on time. Praise the Lord. Like as I said, our women have already said it. I thank God for the power of God in BICC because we put God first in BICC. We wake up every day, 365 days, 5 a.m., come sun, come rain, come winter, come summer. Even when we travel, our brethren, they, that thing becomes part of them. They wake up 5 a.m., hallelujah. Those who are afflicted with incurable disease, unexplainable disease, they are cured. Not because we are perfect, because we put God first and God put our own God sought us out. I remember one of our mother, she always said, God will do my own. God will do my own. God will wipe away my tears. You know, she sang that. So whenever she's singing this song, I said, God, indeed, when we put you first, you will wipe away our tears. Praise the Lord. Our women who have been waiting for the fruits of the womb, because we are pressing onto a higher ground. For over 10 years, they've been waiting. Guess what? God answered their prayer. Hallelujah! Woo! Our women in their 50s, could you believe our women in their 50s, in their 50s, waiting for the fruit of the womb? Guess what happened? God answered them. Hallelujah! Woo! Praise the Lord! And we are also believing, because why? I hold on to God's word. And we are also believing our women in their 60s, who are still trusting God, God will do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Woo! Praise the Lord. Before I end up, on Sunday I was challenged. Our general officer gave us a testimony. I tell you, that, that testimony woke me up. Not to be stingy. He said he was in Nigeria. He had no money. But people came to ask him for money. He went to borrow. I said, wow, this is amazing. He went to borrow to give them. Guess what? He is pressing on. He said, within a short period, God opened the door miraculously. That is a man of God who is pressing on. Are you going to press on? Are you going to stop singing with your tithe? Are you going to stop singing? Uh, may God have mercy. Praise the Lord. So I will encourage you, brethren. If you want to press on, number one, recognize that you cannot do anything of your own. Number two, accept you have done wrong and forgive. Another powerful thing I want to cover again. Unforgiveness is worse than cancer. Unforgiveness is worse than cancer. If you are holding on forgiveness in you, you can never move on to a higher ground. It will be like a ceiling on your head. You have to learn to forgive. Behave like a little child. Put two children together to, uh, uh, one minute. They quiet, they fight. The next minute, they are playing. That is the heart and the spirit of God. So my brethren, if you are holding on forgiveness, I will encourage you, go and read the book of Luke. Uh, Matthew. 18, 21 to 25, and learn from there the servant who refused to forgive. Even our Lord will say, Father, forgive us our daily bread as we forgive those who forgive, uh, trespass against us. When you don't forgive, don't expect God to forgive you. So because of time, I will not shoot my time. I just want to uh, encourage those who have not uh, accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. If you are here, I'll give you that opportunity. So just repeat with me. Say, Lord, I know that I have sinned and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and rose from the dead. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. Praise the Lord. That's it. Very simple, very simple, nothing more than that. You have become the family of God. Now you can press on to higher ground. Now your mountain can be shrink to become small before your very eyes. Praise the Lord, let us pray. Almighty God, I just thank and bless you. 
for your daughters or your son, O Lord, who might have given their life unto you. I pray, Father God, that you write their name in the book of life in the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, I pray that from today, O Lord, you start to uphold them and strengthen them, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ committed, O Lord, the apostles into your hand. Father God, that none of them was taken out of your hand. I pray, Father, that this individual that have made this confession today, that nothing, nothing, nothing will take him or her from your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. That on that day, oh God, his or her name will be appeared in the book of life and it will be raptured if the rapture should stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for the answer prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to sing this song if I have a chance. He said, I'm going higher, yes, I am. I'm going higher somewhere. I'm going higher, yes, I am. Going to Jesus who stay. I'm going above the shadows into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. I'm going higher somewhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everyone. Please listen to our announcements. The entire BICC Women Ministry bring greetings to us all both the women in house and online. We thank you all for being part of what God is doing at this end time. We extend our appreciation to our men for their continued support. Our profound gratitude goes to our general overseer, Pastor Joseph Adeyemo, for giving us this forum to shape and shop one another. This is our general UK Women's Conference. We have branches at Thamesmead, Barking, Norwich, and Camberwell. You are invited to join the one closer to your home. Listen to our announcements and activities to remember. Join us daily online for the Women Early Morning Prayer at 5 a.m. We hold quarterly night VJ titled on common solutions to common issues of life. We have Zoom meetings where we are able to cater for each other and reach out to one another on grassroots. We invite you to join any of our branches that is closer to you. Feel free to contact us via church line on the screen. Someone will respond to you as soon as possible. This meeting continues tomorrow at 7 p.m. Please be on time and you'll be tremendously blessed. May God bless us all. COVID-19. We would also like to use this forum to remind us of the current government guideline on the COVID-19 pandemic. Continue to keep social distancing. Wear face masks and wash your hands regularly and use hand sanitizer. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We going to we want to thank every one of us for being part of our conference this year. The conference continue tomorrow and for our closing prayer and prophetic declaration we're going to have one of our uh, senior pastors we that um, are here with us we uh, I can see Pastor Ricketts. Praise the Lord. Is um I can I don't know whether Pastor Ola is in the house. Pastor Bode Ola is in the house. Um, Pastor Ricket, please can you take us in the closing prayer? You're gonna pray for us women for our ministry, 
as well as uh, um, also commit um, our, we want to go to higher grants, you know, so we need some prophetic declaration upon our ministry. May the Lord bless us all as Pastor Rickett takes us to the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, it's a great opportunity and privilege. And uh, it's a good thing that we've been witnessing, even in the women ministry in BICC. Father in heaven, we thank you. Righteous and everlasting that we exalt you. We thank you because despite all the odds, despite every mountains, despite every valleys, despite every rivers, despite every fire, despite the afflictions with which the world is tried and tested now, you are giving even your daughters the grace even to emerge, to set a date and a time for this year General Women's Conference and for all of them even to gather without none missing. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Blessed be the name of Lord. Accept our worship and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father, because we know that it is those that you have called that you have chosen. And it's those that you have chosen that you have ordained and set apart for your glory. We thank you for your daughters, right from the leaders, even to associate leaders, and everyone that has been a partaker of this awesome and glorious uh, meeting, putting it together even in the background and bringing it even to bless us today. I pray, O oh Lord, that your anointing shall never run dry in their lives mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. As there is a, a different level of glory to the song, so also is a different level of anointing. There are some even to the ankle, some to the nails, some even to the, to the waist, some even to the shoulder. I pray, O oh Lord God of heaven and earth, that each and every one of your daughters, even from this uh, mountain, this year as we gather, there shall be overflowing anointing in their lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that your call upon their lives, the work that you have committed in their hands, shall suffer no loss in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we are talking about higher ground. Uh, you know, some people will settle at Jericho. Some will move ahead and said, I am pressing on. I pray that every stumbling block and every blocking uh, stones the enemy must set on their path to moving on to higher ground will become their stepping stones in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You will use every hindrance uh, even to glorify your name and to show forth your praises even in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, anyone that wants to get to higher ground cannot settle for, for less. I pray that every spirit that settles for less be destroyed even in the lives of your daughters in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They have laid their hands upon the plow. I decree in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that because you have, uh, through your grace, counted them to be worthy for the kingdom, Father, they will not look back mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Forward ever, backward never. Mm -hmm upward ever, downward never, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, when man lifts man up, mm -hmm. it can only go as far, you know, uh, as uh, a star can reach. But when God lifts yeah, man up, you are going to finish with the... What is no, it's not limited. 
I pray that you will lift up your daughters so that there will not be any restriction even to the eye that they will get to in the name of Jesus. We cover everything that has been done tonight and even tomorrow, even Sunday to conclude with the blood of Jesus. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Son. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Testimony shall abound. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship together. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God, live with us from now and forever. Amen. Our anchor, which are expand to the right and to the left, and our descender shall inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Amen. Surely. Thank you all for coming. The Lord bless each and every one of us. Let us be early tomorrow and um, all praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Let us be early tomorrow and let us call those who are not present tonight so that they can join us tomorrow and be part of the blessing that the Lord has got for all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Women Fellowship invite you to her General Women Virtual Conference 2020, titled Moving Under Higher Grounds, from 2nd to 4th of October 2020. Join us for Praise and Discussion Night on Friday at 7 p.m., Workshop Session on Saturday at 7 p.m., and Sunday Worship Service on all Best Way online platforms at 10 a.m. It promises to be three days of fellowship in God's presence. Mm. Come prepared. Come be your best. Mm.